Leader. Here. Dunn. Here. Graham. Here. Polemski. Here. York. Here. Hipskin. Here. Healy. Here. Levin. Here. Kennedy. Here. Morley. Here. Wagner absent. Mulliner. Here. 13 present, one absent. 13 present, one absent. We have an official quorum. Uh, next on the agenda is a presentation, Tackle the, t tackle the Tower, uh, which we received first place in. And actually, I believe Bob Tannehill from uh, Elmer's Police Department and also Jim Caviton from the Elmer's Police Department are here uh, for their presentation. Gentlemen, if you would. I think you've got some teammates that you probably want to bring up with you, too. I see a lot of our Elmer's finest here tonight. It's a, gr it's a good thing. <laughs> We have Mr. Grabowski come up also. Absolutely. He's also a team member. He was. I don't remember him, please. <laughs> <laughs> Each year, the American Lung Association uh, holds a event they call Tackle the Tower or Climb the Tower. It's a fight for air for the American Lung Association. A lot of different groups get together and get teams, and they come out to the Oak Brook Terrace Tower down at uh, Roosevelt in 83, and we climb the tower, the stairs to the top. <clears throat> Most of the time, our firefighters here from Elmhurst do an outstanding job, and uh, they have a team there, and they, I'm pretty sure climb with their bunker gear on. Uh, one of their, rep, one of their uh, firefighters is usually at the top uh, speed or the fastest speed with his bunker gear on, which I can't imagine doing. I do it in shorts and a t-shirt. <coughs> um, and actually there's somebody, there's a group missing from the audience that I invited to come tonight. The Addison Police Department's not here. I don't know why they're not here. Um, we actually beat them by two seconds this year. <laughs> <laughs> But we had a real good team this year. Uh, there's a traveling trophy, and Addison Police Department is listed for last year's winner. This year is the Elmhurst Police Department, which these are most of the team members, and I want to thank everybody for coming out that day. We had a real good team, and I want to present this to the mayor to hold that for the next year. Hopefully we can make sure we get that next year, too. Um, our top speed uh, racer up, the, and it's 31 flights, or 31 stories, 62 flights of stairs. And our uh, top speed was, uh, I don't have my glass here, four minutes and 14 seconds. And that was Mr. Grabowski. Jim, thanks for that, and I just want to say it was a team effort. It really was. We couldn't have done it without everybody here. Uh, more importantly, though, I think we raised about $1,400 that day for uh, American Lung Association, which is really the goal of the, uh, of the event. So thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it, and I look forward to uh, being put, qualifying for the team next year. <laughs> I'd like to extend an invitation to our, our Elmer's finest to uh, come up to the council and shake the hands of the aldermen, and we appreciate all your hard work. You even got the IT guy in here? Look at Stenson. All right. <laughs> we're, we're, we are a full-service team here at Elmer City Hall, and thanks, uh, thanks these guys, for, for doing a great job. We, we, uh, we really appreciate your hard work, and, and again, for a great cause, too. So God bless. Please come on up and uh, shake some hands. Something I couldn't do
What did you say? Uh, <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> how many? It's 60 <laughs> <laughs> Stories up at 60. <laughs> <laughs> All right, more honors. Next on the agenda uh, is a uh, volunteer recognition for the Elmer's Historical Museum. And I would like to invite Brian Berghager up to the podium. And while Brian's coming up, we are celebrating uh, Sweet Home Chicago here in Elmhurst. Uh, Chicago was the candy capital of the world. Brian's going to talk to us about that and the history of, of candy and, and all kinds of good stuff. But more importantly, you know, this is a this is National Volunteer Week. And what really makes Elmer's, I think, unique and different is the fact that we've got a lot of people that donate their time uh, here at Elmer's City Hall. We've got commissions and, that are made up of volunteers that, uh, that give their life, that give their, their service to this, this fine city and the museum. And uh, I know Brian's gonna recognize uh, his board and all the volunteers and uh, Mr. Berger, Berghager, take it away, sir. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Elmhurst City Council, for this chance to be here during National Volunteer Week to celebrate the volunteers at the Elmhurst Historical Museum. I want you to know that volunteers make a world of difference at the Historical Museum. They bring a tremendous variety of life experiences to everything that goes on at the Historical Museum. They also aspire to make the museum a much richer and a much better place. And through their work, both day in and day out, week in and week out, they help the museum achieve or surpass many, many benchmarks. At the same time, it's my wish for the historical museum to make a difference in the life of each of these volunteers that are here this evening. I hope volunteers at the museum gain a deeper understanding of Elmhurst and its history. I hope volunteers enjoy the opportunity to work with professional staff, and to learn about the operation of a great cultural institution. And I hope volunteers feel that they have a chance to share their great knowledge and their great skills in an appreciative setting like the Historical Museum. So at this time, I'd like to ask if all of the museum volunteers in the audience would please stand. During 2011, the Elmhurst Historical Museum was extremely fortunate to have more than 70 volunteers, among them, each of you, uh, who worked more than 3,600 hours. Now, this is the equivalent of more than 458 hour days of service service to the Historical Museum, service to the city, and service to the Elmhurst community. In this capacity, all of you did historical research, you processed collections at the Historical Museum, you operated the museum gift shop, you greeted visitors, you helped install exhibits, you helped plan and conduct many public programs, and you were involved in many, many other aspects of museum operations and the overall life of the Historical Museum. None of you climbed the tower, I don't believe, but maybe <laughs> next year. <laughs> so tonight, it is truly a privilege for me, on behalf of the Historical Museum, to thank all of you for your generosity and for your commitment to the mission of the Historical Museum. Now, each of you is special, and I know that I speak for the entire museum staff when I say how much we look forward to seeing you all at the Historical Museum. So thank you. Alrighty, very nice, and uh, we thank all the volunteers. We thank the, the board of, of the museum and, and all their volunteerism and their leadership. Uh, Lance, we, we thank you a ton as well uh, for your direction and your guidance. Uh, you've done a, done a magnificent job. Um, lots to celebrate. Uh, next on the agenda are uh, written communications and petitions from the public. At this time, is there anyone, any written communications or petitions? Please present those to Clerk Spencer, who's up here to my right. Thank you. Anybody else? Good. 
Anyone else? Oh, yep. Yeah. I'm clear out for Yeah. Session. We'll let the room clear because we have a lot of people that are have been recognized, and we again appreciate uh, all their hard work. This time, uh, uh, anyone else run communications or petitions? Okay, we'll go on the public forum. At this time, I ask Clerk Spencer, is there anyone signed up tonight for public forum? Yes, Mr. Mayor, we have um, several that have. Michael Ladani, uh, 1045 East Washington Boulevard. And it's County Board Member Ladan. Welcome, Michael, and uh, welcome to Number City Hall. And a very good evening to, uh, to you, Mayor DeCiani, and to uh, the Elmhurst Alderman, and also to the citizens of Elmhurst. I see from the size of your consent agenda tonight that it's gonna to be a long meeting, so I'll be very brief this evening. But again, my name is Michael Ladon, and uh, I wanna thank you for just allowing me a few minutes of your time this evening to introduce myself as your new representative for District 2 on the DuPage County Board. Uh, back in February, I was appointed by Chairman Cronin to fulfill the term for Brian Sheehan, who resigned. And I know that on District 2, it covers about I believe half of Elmhurst, the other half being in District 1. I joke with Mayor DeCiani that all I'm doing is keeping his seat warm. So, <laughs> But although my tenure uh, to complete the term will end in November, uh, I want to make myself available to all of you, the city leaders, and also to you, the citizens of Elmhurst, uh, as your voice within the DuPage County government. I know that stormwater is a very important topic that has a tremendous impact on this area and especially for Elmhurst residents. I happen to serve on the Stormwater Committee along with your mayor, Mr. DeCiani, and other county, community, uh, other county committees uh, to serve you. And I'm truly honored to have been chosen to represent all of you in this community to make sure that DuPage and Elmhurst remain a very vibrant, a very wonderful place to work, and a very wonderful place to live. So I make myself available to all of you as your representative. I look forward to meeting all of you after the meeting this evening. And uh, again, thank you so much for having me here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Next we have uh, Tony Menensis, 757 South Parkside. Thank you very much. I should have brought a phone book. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, respected members of the council and the Honorable Mayor DeCiani. Since the April 2nd City Council meeting when I last spoke, there have been new developments regarding amendment efforts to Illinois Senate Bill 3332. Most importantly, the Legislative Committee of the DuPage County Board voted unanimously last week on a resolution in opposition to this amendment, and I have made the same request to the Elmhurst City Council. It is a strong unanimous message of the Board's resistance to elected DuPage County Mayor serving simultaneously in elected seats on the DuPage County Board. I remind you, we are discussing elected positions, not appointed ones. There's a huge difference. Senator Harmon's amendment swings wide open the possibility and temporary legality of statewide double elected duty at the county and municipal level. It allows all of you to run and hold your seats. It forces Cook County structure on all other Illinois counties, including DuPage, all in the name of Elmhurst, Burr Ridge, and Elmwood Park but DuPage is big enough to resist it. If this is a trend, it cannot continue to grow and it can be prevented. No one, mayors included, should serve in two elected roles. We are DuPage County and it is time to challenge this unconstitutional law before it goes any further. It is a possible violation of the United States Constitution 14th Amendment which says no state shall deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. To illustrate, there are 18 seats on the DuPage County Board, but there are a total of 39 cities and villages in the county. This means there are not enough seats for every elected city mayor or village president to duly occupy on the county board. In District 2 alone, there is either full or partial representation of 12 suburbs and only three representative seats. This is why county representation must remain separate from city halls. If not halted now, this consolidation of power will expand, 
which in the state of Illinois should not be trusted no matter what the integrity or intention of the candidate. It is not about the candidate. It is about government at the local level remaining in line with the state and national level. Liberty protection begins at home or it will slip away. The DuPage County State's Attorney has published an opinion along with the unanimous vote of the DuPage County Legislative Committee, both in basic opposition to double elected duty. The only opinions or positions which still remain absent are those of the Elmhurst City Council and the Elmhurst City Attorney, which was requested in writing on March 27th by myself and again this evening uh, to the City Council. I as a citizen in the community await leadership and guidance from the Council. And the bill is on its third reading extended to April 26th. There is a delay, but the time is now. You got 10 days and then it's going to vote. And so if you remain silent for 10 more days, it goes through with silence. I would ask you to speak. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Messis. Claude Pagash, 566 West Gladys. My name is Claude Pagach, 566 West Gladys. In regards to the assistant city manager's position, I took the time to review the telecast twice. It was stated that ex expenses would, experience would be lost if the individual proposed for the job was passed over. This did not stop this city from replacing a member of the library board or a member of the police and firemen's commission, vote of long standing. Salary was discussed. The city manager saved money this year. We can hope he can save money next year. But then again, we are, all, we are always, uh, always say it costs money to run government and we can raise taxes. It was stated the individual knows the city and the people yet when we hired the city manager, we cared li little if he knew anyone or if even if he knew where City Hall was. When it was asked if the position could be filled as a part-time, the council turned the idea down. When the mayor asked what local towns have assistant city managers, it turned into a guessing game. The answer, Carroll Stream, no. Lombard, no. Oak Brook Terrace, no. Villa Park, no. The city manager asked for this position. But in addition, that he was helped by the city staff. If this is the case, why must this position be made permanent? When in fact, the position was created to be temporary. Thank you, Claude. Jim Belden, 719 Berkeley. Good evening, everyone. Jim Belden for 719 Berkeley. I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about electric aggregation in the program. And I wanted to, to start out by saying I wanted to thank the elected officials and staff for uh, posting the uh, public hearing notices and the draft plan of governance on the city website. That's, that's awesome. And I appreciate the, the transparency because uh, this program is going to be an excellent program for all the eligible residents and small commercial businesses. I read through the uh, draft plan this afternoon, but I was looking for more details regarding the actual plan specifics. And these are things like the length of the contract term, the level of certi uh, renewable certificates, the provisions to enter and exit the program, are there any penalties involved for that, uh, what happens at the end of the initial contract term. And uh, 
these are mentioned, but they're not really specified in any great detail. I think many of these details, according to the uh, draft governance plan, are being pushed to the draft power supply agreement and the draft RFP for actual electric supply. And what I'm asking for uh, the uh, staff as, as well as the officials is to find out whether these documents have been prepared by the city's broker and whether the broker can provide that to staff so that they can also be posted on the website prior to the April 23rd uh, first public hearing. And so uh, that is the, the nature of my comments and, and uh, I thank you for the time. Thank you. And last we have Ellen Unger, 462 North M Emroy Avenue. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank my older person, Mr. Brom, who's been very responsive to me and some of the concerns I've had over the years. It's not that he returns phone calls, he rings my doorbell and sits in my living room and we chat. And the last chat we had several weeks ago concerned the increase in city stickers and I realize that I'm a little bit behind the eight ball on this because I got sticker shock today when I paid my city sticker as a senior citizen. I think the increase was too much. Um, as Mr. Brown and I talked in my living room, uh, inter incremental increases, most people understand, doubling it, hard to understand. One of the other conversations we had for future reference, because I know this is always a part of the city council, is uh, garbage pickup, uh, the, the differentiation. And I, I would tell older persons that it, one size doesn't fit all. My 97-year-old mother generates enough garbage she could probably fill up a garbage can in a month. So the, the need to have these 32 gallon things versus the monstrosities is, is something that has to be considered for, for the future. And I appreciate my, the time that you've given me. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, that concludes public forum as far as who has signed in for tonight. Thank you, Clerk Spencer. Uh, we will now move on to announcements. Anyone with announcements for tonight? Uh, Clerk Spencer. I just wanted to remind everyone of the spring cleanup for residents living within the corporate limits of Elmhurst. It's going to take place this week uh, on your normal refuge collection day. And remember, as we've stated before, electronics will not be accepted. And also, I wanted to announce that the police department is taking part in national prescription drug Take Back Day, and that will be on Saturday, April 28th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the uh, parking lot at the police station. And they will be able to collect expired, unused, unwanted prescription uh, drugs. Thank you, Clerk. And uh, City Manager Grouse has a couple announcements as well. Yes, thank you. As a follow-up to uh, what the City Clerk just announced, uh, over the weekend, the uh, Elmhurst College uh, conducted an electronics recycling um, uh, program that the city partnered with and we advertised for them and it was very successful if you didn't get a chance to read the article today uh, I just wanted to throw a couple quick things out there before I do that I want to thank Mike Hughes and Pat Morley from our public works team who really worked on that for us um, they ended up collecting 112 pallets of electronics for over 85,000 pounds of electronics it was uh, an in incredible success, more than what they uh, expected. And they were also able to collect and shred 9,000 pounds of paper that will be recycled. Uh, so we are going to look to partner with them on a more frequent basis to do this. Obviously, there's a need for it in town, so we will continue working with the college on that. And the second item that I have is just a reminder that vehicle stickers are, um, are due to be purchased and put on your vehicles by May 1st. You can get that online or here uh, at City Hall. Good. Anyone else? Alderman York. Uh, just a quick reminder that on Saturday the 22nd is the 60th uh, anniversary of the Elmhurst Choral Union. Their concert is the Hammerschmidt Chapel, I believe, at 3 p.m. Um, uh, quite, a, quite good longevity for a, a group like that. So everybody come out and support them, please. Thank you. Very nice. Anyone else? All right. Lastly, I, I want to throw in a couple. Oh, Alderman Gutenkoff. Well, I think perhaps we ought to mention the um, public hearing dates for the electric aggregation. 
I, I believe Alderman York was going to mention that under okay. the report for the electric aggregation. Very good. Very good. Um, wanted to mention two things. Uh, on Thursday, April 26th, uh, Center for Speech and Language Disorders, CSLD, is having their uh, annual You Make a Difference uh, Award, and actually the recipient is Dan Gibbons from Elmhurst here. Uh, that, that event is going to be 6 p.m. at Stymax and Hillside. Um, you know, all the proceeds benefit uh, CSLD, which is based right here in, in Elmhurst. And for those, and actually I, I confirm with District 205, we have 122 uh, actually confirmed diagnosed kids in District 205 be, uh, receiving services that have autism. And Autism Lobby Day is April 24th down in Springfield. It's a Tuesday. I will be down there that Tuesday as well as the following, the following day, Wednesday, for DuPage mayors and managers. But any families or parents that like to come down and voice their concerns about what the state can do for their child, whether it's education, whether it's insurance, whatever it might be, that's the day to come down. So Autism Lobby Day uh, down in Springfield on Tuesday, April 24th. So uh, anybody else? That's it from, uh, as far as announcements, we'll move on to our consent agenda. And uh, at this time, I'd ask if anyone has a question, may want to vote no on any particular item on the consent agenda, please indicate that at this time, please. Anyone? Okay, hearing none, I'd ask for a motion and a second to approve the <coughs> entire contents of the consent agenda. Alderman Gutenkopf with a motion, Alderman Morley with a, a second. Clerk Spencer, if you please call the roll. Gutenkopf. Aye. Morley. Aye. Wagner, absent. Mulliner. Aye. Pezza. Aye. Leader. Aye. Dunn. Aye. Graham. Aye. Polumsky. Aye. York. Aye. Hipskin. Aye. Healy. Aye. Levin. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. The consent agenda passes in its entirety. And we move on to uh, reports and recommendations of appointing elected officials. First, my, my report um, uh, got some good news. Last week we had our, our Western Access um, a meeting with the uh, Illinois Tollway um, and also with the county. And uh, City Manager Grabowski and I both attended that meeting along with many other mayors and managers from, from DuPage. And, uh, you know, this project has probably been in the works for over 30 years. And uh, the $3.6 billion project, which had minimal funding at the very beginning of the project, tentatively has about $3.5 billion funded for that project. So we are literally $1 million away from our $3.6 billion. Excuse me, what's that? $100, yeah, excuse me, $100 million away from uh, total funding of, of the Western Access project. Um, some good news out of Washington with the transportation bill. They're, they're going to be helping. And um, so, so, so far, so good. And we've got, uh, I, I think, uh, a, uh, a plan of national significance that's directly going to impact uh, DuPage County and, and have a huge impact for Elmhurst. Uh, 60,000 permanent jobs, uh, roughly 2,000 jobs coming here to Elmhurst. Uh, and we all know, I think, our town has benefited from having major highways and byways come through our community uh, from industry and commerce to getting our, our residents around quickly and, and uh, conveniently. So, so this, uh, this, this was good news and uh, we're looking forward to the start of this project. And uh, uh, also uh, for our third ward alderman, uh, we did speak about the North Avenue 294 uh, concerns, uh, e e uh, eastbound uh, traffic that currently go eastbound, can't go eastbound. And um, uh, we're looking to try to get that expedited as it is part of this project. Um, so instead of having to wait maybe seven years for that to happen, we're actually asking them, can, you, can we move that up to years maybe one through three? So, and they seem to be pre very pre receptive. So, because the, 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 the Elgin O'Hare, the, the, the Western Access will be built basically in three stages, east-west being the first stage, north-south being the second stage, which would connect Elmhurst to the, to the um, east-west interchange. And then the last leg would be the north side of, of, of the Elgin O'Hare, uh, connecting to, uh, to to 90, um, so so we're we're looking at that 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 second stage affecting Elmhurst critically, um, and the fact that the eastbound ramp can be installed off off 294, whether this happens or not, um, makes this a, a project that we can move up pretty quickly. We're hoping so. So Alderman Plumsky and Alderman Brown, we're we're pushing for that, just so you you, you both know. And that's it for me. Anyone else with uh, Reports from the diocese. 
Okay. We will move on to uh, item number 10, committee reports. Clerk Spencer, if you could please read the uh, recommendation. It is therefore the recommendation of the Finance, Council Affairs, and Administrative Services Committee that the City Council approve the draft plan of operation and governance for review and public comment and public hearings scheduled for Monday, April 23rd, 2012 at 6.30 p.m. and Monday, May 7, 2012, 7.30 p.m and that the Finance Committee be designated to approve the electric supply bid for electric aggregation program. Respectfully submitted Finance Council Affairs and Administrative Services Committee, signed by Stephen W. Hipskin, Chairman, Kevin L. York, Vice Chairman, Mark A. Mulliner, and Scott M. Levin. At this time, I entertain a motion and a second to put this particular report on the uh, floor, please. Chairman Hipskin, with a motion, and second by Vice Chairman York. Uh, discussion, Chairman Hipskin. Uh, I move that we accept this motion in its entirety, uh, and I actually move to Alderman York to give us some clarity on it. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Alderman Hipskin. Um, uh, Alderman Hipskin was out of town on business when we had our discussion on this at our last committee meeting, so I've. Uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and try and take on the uh, task of explaining everything that went on to this. First of all, um, as uh, Patty just read in the, uh, in the report, the two key dates, and Alderman Gutenkoff asked about them earlier, the, the two key dates are April um, 23rd, and that's going to be a special meeting of the City Council that's going to occur at 6.30 before our committee meetings on that night, and that's going to be a public hearing for um, folks who want to come out and ask some questions or perhaps just listen in and, and hear some um, questions and concerns regarding the aggregation program. You have that opportunity on the 23rd and then the final opportunity is on May 7th. It'll be incorporated as part of, as part of our regularly scheduled city council meeting that night um, starting at 7.30. Um, again, this is, what you see in front of you, the, the draft um, plan, is that it's a draft plan, and, and one of the speakers tonight um, alluded to the fact that there aren't a lot of uh, details in this, in this plan yet, and that's uh, strictly by design at this point in time. Um, it's a draft plan of operation and governance. Um, this is a, um, a, re a report, a document that we're gonna fill in the holes with as we um, gather information from the public hearings, hear what people have to say, questions are asked, and those types of things, so that we can in incorporate that into the work that we need to do on it um, as far as filling in all the holes, talking about um, um, all the different elements of the plan. Um, and there may even be some issues that we, you know, talk about, that we may talk about tonight. But as a timeline, our plan is to have the city's uh, final plan of operation and governance completed by, or completed at the committee meeting on May 14th. And at that point, a committee report will be issued and we will have um, an ordinance um, approving the plan of operation and governance and also um, a suspension of the rules to allow for consideration of ordinance on that, on that evening. Um, this will allow the city then to go to enter the electric market on May 22nd. And um, w by that point in time, the committee asked that the consultant provide us with any matrix that are out there from um, communities that have gone to the market. And so we'll actually be able to see pricing that's actually going to be um, voted upon and put into place by the time we have our next committee meeting. So an example of a matrix would be, um, the different elements that would go into that would be the term of the contract. Is it a one-year contract, a two-year contract, a three-year contract? Um, what would be the best rate at current standards? In other words, not taking into consideration um, the, the RECs, the, um, um, the, the green, ener green energy portions of the of the um, supply chain. Um, and of course, other concerns that people have are those of, well, what happens if we contract for a rate and then the Illinois 
power authority um, on June uh, 3rd, 1st is going to release the new rate that ComEd is going to charge all their customers. And what happens if that rate is lower than something we're contracted for? Well, of course, um, we would allow for provisions in the draft or in the in the plan of governance of operation and governance for um, customers to basically revert, revert back to um, the ComEd supply and at that pricing. So these are all items within the plan of operation and governance that we have to, um, you know, go through and discuss, listen to what people have to say, but there's um, a little bit of, of heavy lifting yet to be done at our committee meeting in order to, to pull this all together. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, too, is for the public, it's just as important as the public hearing dates, is that there is now, there are two links on the city website currently for the plan of governance, plans of operation and governance that we're looking at tonight. One is on the home page under the eye on Elmhurst. There's an article talking about the uh, public hearings there, so there's an actual link in there. And there's a link on the electric aggregation uh, link over on the right-hand side of the website. So people want to know what this uh, plan of operation and governance is. There is now two links so that the public can go look at this versus having to come into City Hall. So I'd like to thank um, the city for taking care of, of getting that done. Um, um, other things that we, um, other things that we want to um, bring to your attention was we've asked for the uh, finance uh, committee to have the vote on the pricing on this, and the reason for this is that when we go out to bid, um, say it's May twenty second and we get our bids in, there is a, a relatively immediate decision that has to be reached on um, agreeing to those rates. And um, it would be clumsy and probably just not time, um, pr probably the time just doesn't allow it for us to call a special meeting and have everybody come in there and vote on it at that time. We need to be able to react to the market. So when we come back to the city council, we'll have a plan it's got the matrix in there of what the committee recommends the elements of the matrix are. And we'll have some examples of what other communities have, have actually contracted for more than likely at that point in time. We can't say they will contract or they won't. We don't know the answer to that. But we'll at least be able to see what the bids were on any given day at any given time. Um, and so what we're asking for the city council to do is to give our committee um, the authority by a majority vote of the four members um, to go ahead and have the authority to, to contract for the electric rates um, that, we, that the aggregation will proceed under. Um, and it, it, again, it's, it's basically a timing issue. We need to be able to react to the market and get them an answer um, on a very, on a 24-hour basis is basically what our, our consultant is telling us. It's a commodity. Prices change every day. It'll be interesting to see as the matrix come in how the prices change from you know one day to three days to five days as these different things come in. So um, I know there were a couple you know questions um, that that folks had had. Um, um, we 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 don't have all the answers to all of them right now, but we're hoping as we listen to public hearings and as we meet with our consultant at our committee meeting that this document is going to come together. It's going to still, um, in its final draft, is still going to be a little bit um, fluid as far as a lot of things will be in the form of exhibits and amendments to this type of thing so that it can service in the future going forward when we go back to the market to negotiate another contract term in perhaps another year or two years, depending on what's going on in the marketplace. So um, hopefully I've answered some questions, and if not, I'm sure my uh, fellow committee members will help me out here. So thank you. Thanks, Alderman. Any other questions or discussion? Alderman Pezzo. Thank you, Mayor. I do have a couple of questions. One is just in general, when and where was the notice published or advertised so that anyone interested could, could which papers or? Marilyn, do you know which papers that was offhand? first notice was in the Independent on April 5th, and the second required notice was in the press in last Friday's paper, Friday the 13th. 
April the 13th. Great, thank you. And it's also on the website, we said, correct? Yes, it is. all the information is on the website. <clears throat> and I guess my other question, I just, it seems like the timeline, I understand why the timeline is the way it is. I, I'm just assuming that based on the quick timeline, it's public hearing to committee to City Council. council. Um, I'm assuming we're going to be relying pretty heavily on the consultant to help with that quick transition. Is that the yeah, case? Yes, that's correct, Alderman uh, Pezza. The um, consultant was at the meeting um, with us last week and spent quite a bit of time and kind of went through this. You know, one thing that, that um, Alderman Molnar noticed right away was the length of the letter, um, you know, letting, letting residents know that this is an effect was like a page and a half long. So we're, as a, commi a committee, very concerned about the length of that letter and we're going to try and get it, you know, in a more clear, more clear and um, a, a much shorter version so people can understand what's going to go on. But yes, the consultant will be there at our committee meeting and um, like I said, he'll have some additional information. We've already put him on task to, um, you know, clean up some language here and there and, and come back to us with some additional ideas. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Anybody else? Mr. Healy, not all I've been done there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, one general comment and then, a, and then one kind of tactical question. The general comment is um, you know, I, I've been a proponent of, of aggregation all along, and I, I, I'm almost excited to see the kind of results we're going to get. The concern I have, and, and it's been voiced a couple times by, um, you know, the resident um, who clearly knows what he's talking about when it comes to aggregation, uh, it is a multi-year deal. I'm not fearful of a multi-year deal per se, but there are, um, there are some risks involved uh, in multi-year deals. And based on the research I've done, uh, it seems that 2013 seems to be a pivotal time for electric contracts because many of the cheap electric contracts that ComEd's parent company has out there expire in 2013. So there's concern that um, rates in general could come down, including ComEd's published rate. So I think it's going to be very important for us and the committee to, to keep in mind that um, whatever we do, if, if we choose to do a multi-year, that uh, we build in safeguards so that if, if, if our contracted rate is above ComEd's, that uh, we give people options. And some of the options I've seen uh, have included um, opt-out periods where there is no charge, uh, things like that. So I think, I think flexibility um, if we, if ComEd does drop the rate in 2013 or in any year is very important. Uh, I know that's something that, that I'll be very um, interested in seeing come out of, of um, what we do from a final uh, contract, if you will, proposal. So that's the general statement. The, the specific question, I've had this from a few residents and I don't know how to answer it. If, if a resident has already left ComEd and gone to another provider, do they need to opt out? No, no, that's a good question. Um, if a resident is already contracted with another energy supplier, they will not even get any notice that this is going on. Um, it's already on their bill and that's part of the information that's passed to the city and to the aggregator so that they'll never be contacted. They're already in a contract. So it's, it's the only people that are, the only residents and small businesses that are affected are the ones currently with ComEd. Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Yep. All of them done? Let me, let me follow up with one, one other thing too. Yeah, one other thing reg regarding the concerns you had with uh, the pricing. I suspect that we'll see those concerns in the pricing. In other words, we'll go out for a one year, we'll go out for a two year, and we'll go out for a three year. And I suspect we'll see some um, variations in the pricing based upon those concerns that you um, just expressed. And then um, without a doubt, there will be provisions in whatever contract, whether it's a one year, two year, three year, Again, that if the price um, that we negotiate becomes higher than what's available through ComEd or any of it, its parent companies, um, people will revert back to ComEd at no charge, right. at, to the lower cost electricity supply at no charge. Right. Very good. All of done, Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm. Uh, I'm trying to understand the uh, the absolute urgency in getting this deal done. Um, in, a, in a month or so time frame. Um, there are some 200 municipalities that uh, uh, passed resolutions to 
uh, examine aggregation and uh, uh, wondering if the committee can comment. Uh, I, I, I have concerns that it's possibly not a buyer's market right now. You have a lot of municipalities that are in the same situation that Elmhurst is in um, that are looking to, uh, to align themselves with a, a, an electrical supplier. Um, and uh, at this point, uh, there's, there's quite a lot of demand to, to, to enter into contracts like, like this. Um, so I pose that to the, the committee uh, if, the, if there is also concerns due to that fact. I, I, um, I can appreciate those concerns, and I think that everybody needs to understand that we could go out to the market and get a price, and we may say, we don't want to do it. It doesn't make any sense for us to do it at this time. That could happen. Um, I personally don't think it will. I think the urgency is, is it's commodity, and I think overall um, the cost um, it changes pretty frequently. So I think that we're better off um, doing it as quickly as we can, knowing that there are ways out of it doing it in a short term, um, because um, I think the pricing is going to get less favorable as time goes on. The savings are going to start to... Um, marginalize as time goes on. So I think that's an important thing. I think the other thing to consider too is is the summer is typically the peak electric, electric usage time for residential and small uh, commercial users. So any savings that there are to be had are kind of multiplied by the number of kilowatt hours that are used in the uh, summer versus the winter. So I think it's important that we, you know, take all these things into account as we as we look at the whole picture. But um, certainly understood your concern is understood and, and will be um, examined thoroughly in committee. Alderman Levin. Well, I would just second uh, what was said, and as Alderman Healy mentioned, there is a concern that rates will be going up, and the feeling of the committee was let's get the savings started now for as long as we can have that savings package available to our residents. And I don't think it's the kind of situation where because so many communities are out there going through the process right now that it's a limited commodity, people in the state of Illinois are using the same amount of electricity from whomever they're going to get it from, uh, and they're, you know, they're going to want to get involved in the bid process and get the best prices we can get, and it's uh, competitive, and we'll get the best price we can. If we can't get a good price, is Alderman York says, then we're not, we're not bound by it. But I do think it's a good thing to get the jump on this. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just really a comment on the aggregation um, going forward when the committee does their evaluation. I know, obviously, price per kilowatt hour is one of the main concerns. Duration of contract is another main concern. Uh, and I think Alderman York, you already mentioned it. But the other piece I, I want to make sure that is reviewed and communicated to back to the rest of the council is what percentage of renewable energy is used per each of these providers that we're getting prices for. Um, I know that there's, a, I believe, a federal mandate of 15%, I want to say, um, just off the top of my head. But it would be interesting to see on the numbers that come back and how much is being used as renewable energy source. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, the consultant was going to come back to us, you know, obviously with some matrix from other communities. So we can see what they're doing. You know, it's been recommended that we look at the baseline, which I think is 7%, 6% currently, um, but look at 25% renewable energy credits, 50% renew renewable energy credits, and we could go 75 and 100 too and get all the different costs aligned. I think that's something that I think is very important to the committee is that we look at the whole, you know, scope of the thing and then see, you know, if it's a tenth of a cent difference per kilowatt hour between 75 and, and, and 7, 6%, whatever it is currently, you know, that's a, that's a wise, you know, investment, but that'll something that'll be vetted in committee. So, thank thanks. You. Anyone else? Alderman Healy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just one additional point, and, and um, in terms of why we want to move quickly, and I, I agree that we need to move quickly for the reasons um, the committee member said, but also there is a ComEd rate increase out there that's hanging in the balance. Uh, there is one part of the ComEd rate for electricity that is not encumbered by the ICC, by ICC oversight. They can raise this one part 
and, and it's it, and I f I forget the name of the particular part of the bill, but they can just raise it, and they, in fact we're going to raise it in March, uh, roughly four percent as I recall, and that would have been immediate. Uh, they put that plan on hold almost at the last minute. It was about two weeks to go before they were going to implement. And they said no. Uh, that rate is supposed to, that rate increase is supposed to be back up for review, I believe, in May. Um, and and the reason given for why ComEd wanted to raise the rates or needed to raise the rates is because they are losing so many communities that the power that they purchased from their parent company, um, they are not fulfilling their contract. So or it's something along those lines that if they don't, because they're not recouping what they thought they were because people are leaving, they needed to raise the rates to everybody else. So if we stick around, if we decide to stick with ComEd too long, we may actually see a rate increase should ComEd put that rate on the board, uh, back on the board. Uh, I have the article and I'll make sure I just, uh, give it to City Manager Grabowski to distribute to the rest of the council, but it spells it out much better than I did just now as to why ComEd's doing what they're doing and more importantly, uh, the timing of that, but the timing is like now. Thank you. Very good. Anyone else? All right. Um, good discussion. I will ask for uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed say no. The report passes. Move on to item 11, which is our budget ordinance. For expense, if you please read the ordinance, please. A budget and appropriate appropriation ordinance for the city of Elmhurst for the fiscal year beginning on May 1, 2012 and ending on April 30th, 2013. Very good. And before I ask for a motion and a second to put this on the floor, I would just like to say that this budget is balanced. I think it's fair to our employees, and we've got a lot of our unions out here today representing uh, the employees that we serve, and they do a great job, and we appreciate them. Um, puts money in the bank, not a ton, but it does add to our fund balance, which definitely needs to be replenished. We're still not at that 90-day level where we really need to be, but uh, I, I think it's uh, a lot of hard work, and, and I appreciate staff and our management, and uh, with that, I'd ask for a motion and a second to put this on the floor, please. Alderman Hipsky with a motion, second by Alderman York, and discussion, Alderman Hipsky. I think you summed it up uh, quite well, and uh, I, I think we've done a lot of work and a great job. Good. Alderman York? Um, well, um, I'd, first of all, I'd like to say thanks to the uh, finance staff um, for, uh, well, a lot of people to thank, actually, City Manager Grabowski, um, Marilyn Gaston, Tom Tracine, uh, Mike Hughes, Dominic Panico, Mike Kopp, uh, all their city staff that provided you know, key input into um, this mission critical 2012-2013 um, budget. Um, from my perspective, the budget was a very pleasant surprise. Um, um, I don't know if my expectations were too low or, or exactly <laughs> what caused the surprise, but um, uh, you know, I, I was excited to see that this budget contemplates a, a, an increase in fund balance of $600,000. Um, we're still in some somewhat challenging <clears throat> economic times, and um, I was glad to see that. Uh, and then when you factor in the nearly $200,000 that we're putting into the, uh, back into the working cash fund, which is part of a plan, but it's still incorporated in that 600, or we're really at 800,000. I think what's um, the most exciting is that in the current fiscal year that we're finishing up, we're looking at a contribution of nearly $1.7 million to, to fund balance. And um, this number was, when we looked at the budget this time last year, was about a $400,000 increase. So it just goes to show you that, you know, the work that the city staff does every day and the guidance that's provided by the management, city manager, and elected officials um, as a result of the hard work that we all do, both in committee and individually challenging people in the city to do it better, to do it smarter. These are all you know, key things that go into this whole process. Um, I think that obviously it's a good document. I think there's areas where we can improve. And I think um, every one of us probably has those same feelings. Um, so I think that we can always continue to look for efficiencies. Um, I've, I know there's been already been some happen since, um, since we last talked and I think that we're definitely, when we're you know, contemplating 
um, the addition of, uh, of, a, of a retailer like Mariano's to the, to the city. And we're contemplating um, some very you know, viable TIF projects as we go along. I think there's some exciting growth on the, on the horizon here that should um, eventually um, go to the point of taking some of the tax burden directly off the taxpayers. I think as we increase sales tax revenues and tax revenues in general, um, we can maybe perhaps relieve some of the pressure on those. So um, I'm very happy about those. Um, I think that the most challenging aspect of the city's budget continues to be labor and the associated costs that are required to provide the superior city services that we all want. And um, I'm, I'm glad to see that our city manager has taken the time to get to know the city and work as hard as he can to reduce headcount. Um, I hope that he continues his, his acclimation with the organization and that he can find some additional labor-related savings uh, through implementation of technology, outsourcing of non-critical city services, and uh, overall increased efficiencies. Um, I think, uh, as I mentioned last week, an overall uh, review of the overall compensation across the city is critical to achieving savings and providing equity for those of us who, who pay for city services. So long story short, very long story, um, I support the budget for 2012-2013 wholeheartedly. Um, I want to continue to work hard for the taxpayers. I want to, for an example, I want to make sure that the Elmhurst taxpayer doesn't subsidize offenders, people who've gotten tickets who choose to pay their tickets with credit cards by looking at possibly implementing a convenience fee for these type of transactions that'll take some uh, tens of thousands of dollars of, of burden off of the taxpayers and implement a convenience fee that would shift it to the offenders instead of the taxpayers. Look for these types of transactions, um, ways to get entice people to pay their city bills via ACH versus credit card, reduce the cost of the transa transaction and save taxpayers money. So I look forward to those challenges in the future, but in the present, I support this budget and I ask for everybody to support this budget. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman York. Any other questions or discussion? Alderman Guttenkopf. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. At our last, um, our final meeting, uh, we discussed uh, quite a few things. And as a council, I think um, there are always gonna be things that we don't agree on. But that doesn't mean that we can't support this document, which allows the city to go forward and to operate. And so I think um, mostly what I want to say is that I, even though I feel like there are always going to be things in a budget that I don't agree with or that I don't think we should spend our money on, it doesn't mean that we as a city can't come to an agreement and move forward. So I support the budget as it stands. I don't support everything in it 100%. I never could. I don't think I ever have supported 100% of what we do. But I think that's part of the process of messy democracy, if you will. So I do support the budget. I'm going to um, vote to approve it. And I appreciate all the hard work that we've all put into examining everything that we spend money on. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman uh, Peza. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Um, I guess if we were here to vote line item by line item, I think it's very clear that I do not and cannot justify the need, nor do I support the creation of a new full-time assistant city manage, manager pensioned position. I believe I made that clear two weeks ago. I even motioned to move that we compromise and maintain a part-time non-pension position, which unfortunately did not receive support. But that being said, tonight we are actually here to vote on the overall budget, um, which is a financial guide, and it is crucial to the operation of the city of Elmhurst. Uh, it also affects our bond ratings. So since this is a balanced budget, since it overall does have a decrease in expenditures from last year, I will support this budget. And as Alderman Gutenkopf stated, um, I'm sure there's something every year we don't agree with, though for me this was a much stronger issue. But overall, I will support this because it is a crucial piece to operating our city. Thank you, Alderman Peza. Alderman Brown. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I had a tough time with this decision tonight. Um, last year, I did not vote in favor of the budget the first time in 11 years. 
uh, this year I also contemplated the same decision. Uh, reason being is I, I, I as well don't feel that I um, agree with everything in the budget or, or the, the items that I feel are lacking in the budget. Um, I made a motion to uh, do some additions to that respect two weeks ago, um, which did not move forward in, in, in the direction that I would have liked to have seen. I feel that uh, this budget does not support some of the necessities for the third ward, um, street construction, new sidewalks, um, et cetera. I also have concerned and voiced my concern in previous discussions about the assistant city manager position. Um, I don't feel that um, there is a need for the ACM full-time position. Um, I voiced that clearly when we uh, discussed it previously. What it comes down to though, as Alderman Gutenkoff and Peza stated, is that even though I don't uh, agree with some of the line items or line items that are lacking, um, at least from my perspective in this budget document, that I think that uh, it would be appropriate for me to support the budget this year and work with the appropriate committee, being the Public Works Committee, as well as the city manager, to ensure that the items that I've discussed are um, appropriately put into the budget for the upcoming fiscal year, and we can move forward at that time. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Anyone else? Oh, Alderman Morley, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just real quick, I'll repeat what a couple people have said, but I really do want to uh, express my thanks and gratitude to city staff. Um, I know they worked months and months and months on this uh, in an effort to not only uh, keep the city running, but also be prepared to answer any question about any one of the 4,000 line items that we might have at any given time. So I truly do appreciate that. Uh, I want to congratulate Mr. Grabowski on his first budget cycle, uh, and I appreciate the uh, strong attention uh, to saving the taxpayers' money uh, with a reduction of staff. Um, I also uh, want to thank Marilyn Gaston and Tom Trezine and all the members of city staff for helping with this budget. And finally, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, my fellow elected officials. Um, it's a hard job, but uh, I'm glad that uh, we can get through it and uh, can agree on it, and I certainly hope we have full support. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Anyone else? All right. Hearing none, I'd uh, ask Clerk Spencer to call the roll, please. Ipskin. Aye. York. Aye. Healy. Aye. Levin. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Morley. Aye. Wagner, absent. Mulliner. Aye. Peza. Aye. Gutenkopf. Aye. Leader. Aye. Dunn. Aye. Graham. Aye. Polumsky. Aye. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 1 absent. The ordinance passes, and we have a approved balanced budget. God bless. Uh, on to item 12, other business. Anyone with other business? Anybody? Okay. And uh, with that, I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. Alderman Hipsky with a motion. Alderman Morley with a second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>